I have been to a swingers club multiple times now and I've experienced very different things every single time I've went and I've learned a lot. So now that it has been six months since I posted my swingers video and over a hundred thousand views, thank you for all the views, I am wondering you guys, should I do a part two to this video? I went to a swingers club as a complete newbie and as a single female and here's what it was really like for a single person and for a couple. Now, while you're waiting for me to get into things, hit that like and that subscribe button down below. It means the world to me. Now, let's get into the fees. How much does doing something like this really cost? What is the dress code like? What is the club areas like? Because, you know, every club could be a little bit different, but this gives you an idea. And also, what did I see? What did I do? What did I not do for that matter? And how did I feel about all of this as a newbie? Let's sit back and relax in my bed and talk, okay? Because it was definitely a new experience that I think everyone should experience at least once in their life, but it might not be what you expect and it might be more intense than you expect it to be, but also you kind of have a control over how much of a new experience this really is for you, depending on what you do do and where you go but either way let's get into the cost first because i'm a cheapskate and this is nowhere near free for an experience you're gonna have usually two fees associated with going to a swingers club and if you don't know what a swingers club in the most general sense of things a swingers club is usually couples that go to a club to swing with other couples or single people, aka meaning they do stuff outside of a traditional relationship dynamic, which means they could make out with people, hug people, kiss people, play with people, which is a common term, meaning are you gonna play tonight, is used a lot when you go to these clubs because people wanna know are you gonna be participating with other people. But either way, it changes depending on the couple. Some people only swap partners. Some people only do stuff with their partner and other people. Everybody is different. But you can also go as a single person, which I went in as a couple, but technically I was a single person. I just went along with a friend. And that's how this whole thing started was because my friend was like, hey, you wanna do something kind of crazy and asked if I wanted to go to a swingers club. And I was like, sure, let's do it for the experience, for the plot line. So that's an idea of what a swingers club is like. Now, if you are a single male, a lot of clubs will not allow you to go by yourself. Only some clubs, I say a lot, but technically I'm just speaking of like the clubs around me that I looked at their sites and all of that. And a lot of times they don't allow single males, they'll allow single females though. And some single females get a little bit of a discount if they're by themselves. And that's because, again, there are two fees associated with doing this type of lifestyle for the most part. And fee number one is most of them require you to be a member. And I'm guessing that has a lot to do with the legality of this because keep in mind there are people full out doing adult activities in a common space. And I believe for most states that requires it to be a members club. So you pay a fee to be a member of this club. And sometimes if you're a member of one club, you can go to other clubs without having to repay membership, but it really just depends on the event. Now, the memberships do range a lot, but a lot of times you can pay for longer periods of time, so let's say six months or a year at a discount, and every club's membership fee is a bit different. Now, in addition to a membership fee, you have to pay an event fee or an entry fee, however you wanna look at it, and that's the fee to go into that specific event. Now, weirdly enough, I've heard a lot of people talk about how like bigger events cost more money, and I oddly went to a kind of larger event when I went, which is kind of funny for the first time. A lot of people are like, you went to this for your first event? Like, that's kind of crazy that you went to the, you know, bigger end of the spectrum instead of starting smaller, but either way, Way, that event costs less than some of the smaller events that happen every single weekend. And I was like, huh? That doesn't make much sense to me. Why is like that cheaper when it was a bigger event? But either way, I think our ticket was around a hundred bucks if I remember correctly. So about $50 each, which when you're considering that it doesn't include much besides entry, it's kind of an expensive thing to do, but it was definitely worth it for the new experience aspect of it. Now, as for the actual dress code of the area, most clubs require you to dress nicer. They require you to 
to have club attire. So you have to be, you know, at least a little bit more put together than maybe somewhere else. You can't walk in your pajamas or butt naked. And the club I specifically went to allowed girls to be a bit more casual than guys. Like guys had to wear a nice button up shirt with sleeves and they couldn't wear shorts or I think there was like some jeans they could wear, some not. But either way, women were way less strict. You were allowed to enter in lingerie. Like full out lingerie, you didn't have to have the nippies covered, you didn't have to have other things covered. So again, it really depends on the club because some clubs do require women to also wear like club attire where you're covered and then you could possibly take it off later, which we will talk about. And that's the idea of, are you going to wear the same thing throughout the night? And for most people, including myself, the answer is no. So I'm gonna show you guys actually a photo of what I wore. So this is what I wore to the club. It was a really cute dress, if you can see. Now the top of the dress isn't actually a dress. So that top part right here, it is lace. And that's because that is the lingerie that I was wearing underneath the dress. And as the night progressed, I did take off the dress and wear only the lingerie. Not gonna show you that, but either way, that gives you an idea of what I wore. And there's also locker rooms. Most clubs will have them and some of them will be like, if you don't bring your own lock, you pay a $5 or $10 to borrow a lock temporarily. And a lot of people use the lockers because they do end up changing, especially when you go to the play areas. And you might also just wanna change because you wanna enter in something different than you wanna wear inside the club because I would not have worn that lingerie on the street, so I would want to change, but I found a cute way of having it underneath so I could just slip off my dress. But if I decided to go to the club again, which we will get into how I feel about all that, if I would go again, I would definitely bring, bring a bag and just completely change. So keep that in mind, most of them will have the locker room, so bring your own lock because then you save a little bit extra money, that five, ten dollars you have to pay to rent a lock. And now as for other attire that you might not think of that you could wear there, there are themed nights at a lot of these places so you might wear everything from 4th of July attire to who knows what 70s attire whatever it is a lot of them do theme nights and some of them people participate in more than others I think ours was a red white and blue theme or something and I saw basically no one participated in it but I'm imagining other theme nights are more popular and people go kind of crazy. I've heard some things, seen some things. Now, as for the actual club, what was the club like? What did I see when I walked in? Actually, we'll get into what I see soon. What was the just literal club like? Because as a person that I barely even go to regular clubs, let alone this kind of club. So I had no idea what to expect. Literally 0% expectation on what I was gonna see. I tried to look up photos online, but the one thing to note that I do very much appreciate that this club was a lot more strict than some of the other ones I've seen is that there is a phone policy and that's do not take your phone out and take photos or videos of people. This is a very intimate environment. This is an environment where people are wearing, saying, and doing things they wouldn't normally. And the club I went to, thank goodness, enforced that. So I had no idea what to expect though because the fact they enforced it so well, I couldn't find photos or videos online of what this club was like. I barely saw photos of what it was like on the inside and that was with the lights on in the daytime and that's not really the same as when you walk in. So from the start of things, what was it like when I first walked in? So we parked on the street and the club entrance looks kind of like a regular club, except for the fact there wasn't people waiting outside, but we also got there a lot later than the start of the event. So maybe there's more people outside before, but again, it looks like a regular club, nothing crazy, and no one would per se expect anything. Now you walk in and there was like a table with wristbands all over them and a lot of clubs do have the wristband thing because it just distinguishes the difference between different people. So the guys had one wristband and this won't be true for every club but guys had one wristband basically you entered. Women had another option, that's if they wanted to be approached or not mm. approached. So you could get a wristband that was basically like, do not come up to me. I will come up to you, do not come up to me. And I noticed because certain clubs are very protective of women specifically, which may or may not be a little bit sexist, but either way, I appreciate that as a woman, obviously. So they want to protect you a little bit more and your comfort level. So they do have a wristband that allowed the whole like, don't approach me, I'll approach you. And then, 
they also she kind of like pulled me to the side to tell me what the other wristband was and if I wanted that one or the other one where people could approach me. I chose the one that people could approach me. I'm open, okay? Either way, not the point. So we got those wristbands and then we moved to this second table where if you brought alcohol, you would get another wristband. And that's because something to note about these clubs and the club environment is they do not sell alcohol at most of these clubs. Most of these clubs in most states are not even allowed to sell alcohol or get an alcohol hall license whatever it is because of the activities that are going on there at least that's what I saw when I looked online and so basically you can bring your own alcohol though and you would bring your own bottle and then at that second table you check it in and you get a wristband with the number they put on your bottle so they put a sticker like ours is, I think 45 actually so they put a sticker on our alcohol bottle labeled at 45 and then wrote 45 on the wristband so you could go up to the bar inside of the club and be like my number is 45 can I have it mixed with coke and some clubs will include mixers with it like with your entry fee and they'll just ask for tips whereas other ones you have to pay each time you want a mixer ours was you didn't have to pay for mixers but the bartenders were very much like you don't tip us we're not happy and either one one of them went on this whole entire rant before we got up to the bar, but not the point. So that was what it was like when you first walked in. And again, there wasn't really much people there because we entered in later. So then you go into the actual like doors that go into the club. And the first level was basically like a regular club. There was tables, there was booths, there was a dance floor, there was poles, there was music, a DJ, a bar. Like it seemed very much like a normal club, except they did have a buffet. We were a little bit late for the buffet, so there was still food on it but I didn't eat any food and again because it's a newbie I don't know I just didn't feel comfortable per like participating in everything like the food and all that stuff so point is there was food and all that there I'm not sure if every club does that and then past the normal club area because again like I said it was pretty traditional like a normal club nothing shocking yet <laughs> I say yet yeah, because it definitely got more shocking and got a little bit more intense and it's hot in my room right now so I guess this is perfect timing to talk about this. So when you go past the normal club area to the left were bathrooms. Okay, pretty normal, right? There was, you know, separated bathrooms for male and female on this floor anyway. And then to the right was a little bit more interesting. There was lockers and then there was booths, except the booths did not have tables and the seating part of the booth was wider and touching the other booth. So basically it was just like one big like booth couch and like cubicle type thing. I don't even know how to describe it. And it was less intense in the beginning because nobody was in this area. So even we, though we entered a little bit late, it wasn't late enough that as much play was happening on this floor. Again, this floor. Earlier in the night, pretty tame on that floor. Same with the club floor, pretty tame. Most people were wearing most of their clothes. There wasn't anything really crazy going on, but again, it was earlier in the night, but later than the start of the night. And so we go back there and there's like these booths. I'm like, okay, interesting. There was even like one BDSM like furniture thing there, but again, nobody was using it. It wasn't that crazy. And then there was a room for smoking, like it had ventilation and all that. So again, really not that crazy. That just reminded me of a Vegas airport. But <laughs> here's the but. Here's the ringer where I got my first dose of reality on what this place is like and my first dose of, oh, this does happen here because again, I wasn't sure how much could happen in these clubs. I did a bit of research, but not too much research. So I wasn't sure like, are people gonna be doing full out adult activity or are they not going to be? Am I gonna see it right away? Is it kind of you have to go to a certain spot? So there was a door to the couples only area. So you had to go down as a couple and I think also single females are allowed to go down. Whereas on the regular floor, you could kind of like separate from your partner, but this area you had to go down with your partner or be a single female. So basically how you enter in the club is how you'd have to go to this back area. And so they we go there's security at the door and we go through the doors and then we go down these stairs to go downstairs and I'm like okay what am I gonna see what am I gonna expect and so we go down the stairs and then we turn and there's two beds two beds in the center of the room they're kind of pushed together but not like long ways pushed together so they're still basically like two separate beds and that's not the crazy part but I'm just gonna give you a little what do you call it 
environment like imagination picture um I really should know the term I'm pretty sure in books you know what I mean it's like the picture that I'm gonna put in your head the scenery I don't know but either way there's two beds in the center and then there's couches surrounding the bed and there wasn't too many people downstairs yet but the first thing I see when I turn my head around the corner is three adults playing. We're not gonna get into too much detail because I do not want this video to be demonetized. I don't want it to be viewable for most of you to see it. But either way, there was three adults playing and you could see everything, all the adult activity, you could see it all. I wasn't per se expecting that in the center of the room. And I do think that there is an idea of the exhibitionist and voyeur type concept. Like, do you like to watch? Do you like to show off? There was a lot of opportunity for both of those things. And so I think those center beds were very much for the exhibitionist people. They're the people that want to put on a show. They want you to watch. They want to sh uh, I don't know how to explain it in a more appropriate manner, but that's the best way to explain it. So that's what that center bed was. And this was earlier in the night and we saw stuff right away. It was two guys and a girl if you were curious, but not the point. There was also people sitting on the couches just sitting and watching, or there was people sitting on the couches kissing each other. But either way, again, not as crazy as the rest of the night got. I feel like we're getting away from what the club was like and getting into more what I saw and what I did. So let's get back to the club. Then surrounding those couches were rooms and all of the rooms had doors that locked but if you left the door open it was kind of like an invite like okay you guys can come in possibly play with us or watch or the door could close and then it would lock and then no one else could enter they could only exit but there was windows to all of those rooms so none of them were fully private because it at some point, someone could watch if they wanted to. It's just sometimes it would just be from a distance through the window. And there was no actual rooms without windows that were completely private that I saw anyway. And then behind, like, rooms surrounding like this. And then showers and bathrooms. But those bathrooms were co-ed. And so basically, I've never been in a co-ed bathroom before. So it's like, oh, there's a dude, there's a girl, there's a dude. Either way. There was that, and then there was co-ed showers, and the showers also had windows. I don't know if every club has showers, but I did appreciate that because if you can tell, I get sweaty easily, so I would probably take a shower there. But that is overall what the club was like. So now that we've started to merge into what I saw and what I did or didn't do, let's start from I don't know where. Oh, let's start from those center couches. So that was an idea of what I saw in the beginning. And in the beginning, no one was in those like surrounding rooms that were more private. They were just in that center bed, which I was surprised that there was a show right away. And that was the first thing I saw. Like that was a pretty um big start introduction to what downstairs was gonna be like or the private area. Had no slow introductions. It was, I saw right away what it was gonna be like. And then since we saw that, we stayed downstairs and we watched for a little bit. So yes, I did watch adult activities in person, but either way, then we would go back upstairs to the club level. And we kind of did that throughout the night. We were, sometimes we would go upstairs, sometimes we would go downstairs. There was couples that approached me and my friend and said, you know, do you want to play? Do you want to play with us? That type of thing. There's a large element of respect and communication and none of it felt creepy or gross or... I don't know, uncomfortable, but obviously everybody's experience is going to be different. Every club is going to be different. Every person there is going to be different. But for the most part, I was shockingly more comfortable and open of an environment than I even thought. And I'm already a pretty open, like not easily uncomfortable type of person, but it was even more so than I expected. So I think a lot of people could enter this world and this lifestyle without being uncomfortable and could do it slowly because throughout the night, I watched. I did not play. We'll get into that in a second. But either way, you could go for the first time and not do any things. You could go to, for the first time and just stay on the club level and not go to the private areas. But I think you should go to the private areas and experience that because I definitely think it was a vital experience for me and it was definitely interesting. But oh, we'll go into how I felt in a second. But again, what did I see? So that I saw, and then as throughout the night progressed, more people went downstairs to the private area to the point where basically no one was upstairs and everybody was downstairs. And so downstairs, 
as more people started cycling through, more things started happening in the private rooms and in the center stage too, but it was still basically like the same thing just different people, maybe multiple people. But as for the private rooms, that was a little bit more of an experience because there's not much room in these rooms. And I've heard some clubs don't have formal rooms. They'll just have curtains. This one had formal rooms. They were definitely built into the space. So like they don't fully touch the ceiling or the floor and like they're not real walls. So you can't like fully lean on them. They'll move a little bit. But again, it was still pretty formal of a room in comparison to some places that have only curtains and don't even have another floor to go to so either way in these private rooms there was adult activity and multiple things of adult activity going on and maybe I'll do um a non PG 13 version of this video and talk about it more if you have any questions I'll answer them but for now I'm just keeping this base like PG and so there was a lot of adult activity happening in those rooms and then it'd be beds where it would be three adults here, three adults here, three adults here, maybe four adults here. And sometimes they would cross over playing between each other. And so was that. And then the beds took up a majority of the room. Cause again, like I said, they were small rooms, but there was enough room for a few people to stand around on the outside. And for the most part, people that were not in the bed were watching or trying to join in. There wasn't really much happening outside of the bed, so these rooms were small. So I would just go from room to room, watching this person, watching that person, maybe interacting with this person, talking to this person. And it was definitely an experience. I don't know how to express what that feels like to be able to just Look, watch, and see this, and stare as much or as little as you'd like. Get as close or as far away as you want. You could stand in the corner and watch. You could stand literally a couple feet away and see it right here. So it's like you could do whatever felt comfortable and right for you. And there wasn't much people being like, what are you staring at or looking at or anything like that. There was only like one or two times where someone asked me if I was comfortable. And they're like, oh, are you doing okay? Like thinking I was sh like shocked by it. But I'm just like, I'm in awe. I'm good. Don't worry worry about me and that's basically like what I expect I'm like oh okay makes sense because I think it's just depending on your facial expression and your resting face someone might offer condolences or not condolences that's not the right word offer basically like a lending ear or a shoulder if you felt uncomfortable but it wasn't like why are you staring or something like that that you might think of if you ever snuck into someone's home and watched this obviously they'd be like what the hell are you doing but here it's very normal there is plenty of people throughout the night that weren't playing some by their own choice aka me some not by their own choice because they just didn't find other people they wanted to play with or other people that wanted to play with them so everything depended. But again, there was so much level of respect and comfortability there that I definitely think for most people you should experience it once in your life, but not if you're going to be weird in this environment, make other people uncomfortable. Obviously, if you can blend in and take in the lifestyle, then I definitely think that you should try it out. But I definitely think if you are going to be judgmental, this is not the environment for you. And I very much appreciated that I did not run into judgment at all, even when plenty of couples came up to us and we denied them in a nice way. And they weren't mean about it. They were respectful about it and took the no and still conversated with us. And it didn't make anything weird or uncomfortable. And like I got hugs, grabbed some but either way, that's an idea of what I saw. I could go into a lot more detail on what I saw, but that's not what this video is about. Just imagine every adult activity I saw. But as for the people there, again, most of them are couples. It doesn't mean they're playing with their couples. There's plenty of couples that will literally not see their partner until the end of the night, or they'll see their partner here and there throughout the night. Whereas other couples, it's like, we might swap people, so like, hey, Basically, like, you play with my wife, I play with your wife, or opposite, like, let me play with your husband, you play with my husband, and they do it near each other. So sometimes, like, some things will linger over, for the most part, female lingering to female lingering, but either way, they'll be able to see each other and kind of, like, know what's going on and maybe, like, touch or, like, switch or something like that, whereas other couples, it's, like, separate rooms. So obviously, everybody is a little bit different. Every couple has their own rules. Like, some couples are very strict and they only play with each other and other people. And, like I said, different flexibility, different people, different a vibe, different rules. So obviously there's a large element of respect because everybody has their own rules and you wanna know the vibe of each person and make sure your vibes vibe together. 
And then how did I feel about all of this? Because I feel like I could talk forever about what I saw and did or didn't do all that. And I could do the same thing about how I feel. But I think the best way to describe how I felt was a couple days later, my guy friend that I went with asked me and he was like, did you have a high afterwards? And I was like, yes. And I had felt that before he had mentioned it. And I was like, maybe it's just in my head or something like that. But I don't know why. I felt a high for the next couple of days. And I feel a high for so often when I think about it too. And it's just like this endorphin, uh, like high. It just feels like a high, like you just had like a really good day or something fed your soul. And I don't think everybody would feel the same, but I felt like something fed my inner soul and my just human nature-y, I don't know how to describe it. It was just endorphins, endorphin kick. And again, I didn't play, I didn't participate really. I watched, I saw, I took in the lifestyle of what it was like, and that gave me a high. And again, I imagine not everybody would be the same. Uh, some people might hate it or feel gross or whatever it is. But for me personally and for my friend and like other people I've talked about this, they're like, it's a high. It's a, it's just a feeling. And again, I'm not talking about being aroused or anything like that. It's just this high. Somebody fed my soul and that's how I felt afterwards and during the experience. Now, as for how do I feel about what I saw, I'm not a really a prude person. So I'm a pretty open out there person. So I think I'm not the best person to ask on what it feels like for the first time. Yeah, maybe the first thing I saw was a bit shocking, but overall, because the environment is full of people that have been in the lifestyle for a really long time, for the most part from people I saw, people drove hours away to go to this event. People flew in to go to this event and that's how other events are like too. So it's like a lot of the people have already gone through the experience of what it's like for the first time and are very comfortable in that environment. And when you're around other people that are very comfortable, it's easier for yourself to feel comfortable. I feel like even for people that aren't normally comfortable, it's like, okay, all these other people are comfortable. It's a very open environment. It's a very non-judgmental environment. It's a very flexible environment. It's very much you can do what you feel like doing as long as obviously the other person gives consent. But either way, it's a very fluid environment. It's not like a very, I don't know how to describe, it's a, it's again, best way to say it, it's a very open environment. I feel like that brings a lot of comfort to a lot more people. So overall, that's how I felt about it. Would I go back? The answer is yes. Would I be per se fully in the swinger lifestyle? I don't know about that. I'm not technically in a relationship right now. So again, I can't really say that. I think it'd be different with every partner. I don't know if I would personally do it as regularly as some couples do because some couples, again, they were fully in the lifestyle. They're doing this every weekend or every couple of months or whatever. They're doing it very regularly and sometimes they're doing it outside of a club environment. They're meeting up with couples. They're going to different houses or other things. For me personally, I don't think I would do that, but who's to say I wouldn't do that in the future. But that aside, as of right now, would I go back as a single female? And the answer is yes. I don't know if I'd per se go back as an actual single female because I don't know. I don't per se want to be a unicorn. I like the idea of going with a partner. So I think if I have a partner that wants to go, which I may or may not, we're not gonna get into that. Either way, if I had a partner that wanted to go with me and participate in things together and separately and all that type of thing, I think that would be fun and I'm definitely possibly going to do that. But either way, that is overall my opinions, my experience, what I saw, what I did. If you have any questions, I'm a pretty open person. Don't be creepy about it, but I'm a pretty open person if you have genuine questions or curiosities. And if this video does well, which hit the like and subscribe button if you want this, I will do an updated part two after I go to another event and just share more of my experience or answer more questions that you might have. So again, hit that like and subscribe button down below Give this video some love and if it gets enough love, I will do a part two with questions and more experiences and I post a new video every single Wednesday helping you figure out adulting while I'm attempting to figure it out myself and I share probably a lot of intimate parts of my life. So again, feel free to hit that like and subscribe button and I hope you have a great rest of your morning, evening, night, whatever it is for you. I'll see you Wednesday.